Hi, I'm Claire Haviland, the English Subject Advisor, and this is a refresher session on how to do the spoken language endorsement for GCSE English Language 1ENO and 2.0. We're going to cover everything that you need to know, feedback from the June series, the key documents, setting up the project, and, um, and then we'll work through admin and then some frequently asked questions. Um, the feedback from the June series uh, was fairly similar to previous series. We were really pleased to see an improvement in um, the submission of samples uh, because last year was the first year where video recordings were, were required again. Um, there were some issues with the video recordings, but those were um, nearly all sorted out this year, which was great. Um, some just key points from the principal monitors report. Um, don't forget to put the grade in the file name. In the specification, there's an explanation of how to formulate the file name. MP3 or MP4 files tend to work best as the recording format, although other um, formats are permitted. Um, do check your video recordings that the, that the student is audible and that the visuals are um, OK before you submit. We had some cases where the recordings had to be sent back because that wasn't the case. Uh, the best place for the recording device is close to the student, not close to the teacher. In some recordings, um, the, the noise from the teacher's desk was easier to hear than the student who was presenting. And um, best for it's best for the recording device to be face onto the student so that they're looking at it rather than a side on view. Um, these are the key documents that you can use for doing the SLE. So you've got the specifications, the admin support guide, which goes through everything that you might need to know, um, the principal monitors report, submission guidance, assessment record sheet with AI declaration. So this um, sheet was updated um, during the last academic year. And just to be clear, the AI declaration means that the student, any student using AI has to provide you with information in a bibliography um, if, if that's the case. So as with any use of AI, they need to record um, what the search terms were that they put into the platform, what the output was and what the date was that all that took place on. Um, Generally speaking, it would be unusual for a student to use AI on this um, assessment. They can't use it to formulate the words that they say. Um, they could use it to research a topic. The, the AI information doesn't have to be in the presentation, the talk. It has to be provided to you. Um, then you've got the head of centre declaration, how to use the LWT, reset rules, etc., etc. Um, so you can get everything you need from that slide when you access these afterwards. Uh, now a few words about making correct entries for students who are resitting. Um, so there are two, uh, two options, three options, two options, uh, two options. So either uh, a resitting student is going to redo the spoken language endorsement. In that case, you enter them as any other student with 1ENO or 1EN2 as the entry code. You upload their grade to Edexcel Online and you upload um, a video of their assessment to the LWT if they're in your sample. If a resitting student wants to carry forward the SLE result from a previous sitting, you enter with 1ENOT or 1EN2T, T for transfer, transfer forward the SLE grade. Um, if you want to use that code or that process, you must have seen evidence that the student has passed um, the uh, SLE before. You get that from their GCSE certificate or from their provisional statement of results, which has the uh, SLE grade on it. If you're entering them using that T code, you won't be entering the grade or a video um, because we will source that from the previous um, entry or the previous assessment. And 
um, the carry forward is possible from other awarding organisations too, because the SLE is identical across all um, awarding bodies who offer GCSE English language. Um, if you have um, entries for both 1ENO and 2.0, you do have to submit two samples because they're two separate qualifications. Um, and the normal rules on the numbers apply, which I'm going to cover a bit later on. Just coming back to the transfer uh, option, it is really important that you see evidence of the pass because if you use the T entry code and then we subsequently find out that you um, and we subsequently find out that the student does not have the pass, um, then you'd have to change their entry and you could incur late fees when you change from the 1ENO T to the 1ENO entry. OK, setting up the whole project, how do we do that? So the format of the presentation, just to summarise, a student is going to present on a topic of their choice for about five to six minutes, and then they're going to uh, um, answer questions from the audience to two for two to three minutes. The question and answer section is essential. Uh, a student can't pass the SLE without doing questions and answers at the end. There are other formats that are possible, but um, throughout the lifetime of the specifications, we have found that the one student and an audience works best. The audience doesn't have to be the whole class, but it does have to include the teacher. And um, it's really up to you and your particular situation, whether you um, how, how you compile that audience. Um, and so just on the audience, if you do choose to um, have just the teacher in the audience, the teacher does still uh, the student does still need to speak as though to a wider audience. If you imagine how a person speaks when they're in a TV um, interview, for example. Um, and it's fair to say that the question and answer section is, can be more difficult for uh, a student if they've only got the teacher as their audience. So that's an advantage of having at least a few students there. Uh, what makes a good topic? Um, so in order to get a merit or distinction, students do have to um, discuss uh, topics with a certain degree of complexity. Um, so the topic could be something as straightforward as football, but if it is something like that, then it needs to be thought through, i.e. the gender pay gap between male and female footballers, um, the behaviour of fans, um, the VAR um, ideas of that kind. And um, the, the experience shows that students do do best if they can choose their own topic, if they have an imposed topic like um, a useful one, like write, uh, talking about a text that they're studying elsewhere, um, then the outcomes don't tend to be quite as good. OK, moving on to assessing. So um, any teachers in the department who are, who are going to assess the SLE should have a look at the standardisation material. First of all, we've got three different sets. You can carry out that same exercise with students if you like. They can watch the performances on the videos and use the assessment criteria to mark them. And as I mentioned before, it is a good idea to read the principal moderators report each year to see what the comments are so that you can avoid any common pitfalls. Um, so planning and preparation, what do you do with students before they actually uh, are assessed for their SLE? It's a good idea to go through the do's and don'ts of formal presentations, um, things like the importance of body language, having an open stance, um, looking at the audience, um, not relying too heavily on notes cards, um, not turning your back to the audience because you're looking at a PowerPoint on the board, that kind of thing. You can model a presentation yourself and have them mark you. Um, and if you want to, you can use the videos that I've made about this. 
they're designed especially for students uh, they can also be handy for catching students up who um, are, have been absent for example uh, the first of those three videos is the most popular um, for students to help understand them what to do um, so once you've been through all that you can also talk to students about whether they're going to use any props or support materials like uh, PowerPoint or notes cards PowerPoints are not required and often not that helpful but students can use them if they want to and uh, most people speak better if they've had some practice so um, all students should have the chance to have a practice they can do it on their own they can record to screen like I am now um, to help them to get uh, a feel also for the length so sometimes presentations end up being too short and um, that can be because students haven't practiced first um, so the students have prepared now you're ready to carry out the assessments uh, as a department you need to, uh, to decide how you're going to approach um, recording at the end of the day you're going to need if you've got more than 30 students you're going to need recordings of 10 passes 10 merits and 10 distinctions many centers have got a much larger uh, cohort so um, you need to decide are we going to record everybody that's rather time consuming are we going to record um, half of each class how are we going to do it um, you um, you should obviously plan to avoid video recording any students who have got high levels of anxiety or additional needs um, and you need to make the decision about the group size is everyone is each individual student going to present to the whole class that takes a really long time um, or are you going to break into smaller groups or is it just going to be the teacher um, students should I Daily wear name badges it just helps again with the monitor being entirely sure that the recording matches the student and it's helpful if they say their name and what they're going to talk about at the start of the presentation in the moderators report monitors report this summer it does say that they also have to say their candidate uh, number that's not actually the case I, I will get that changed um, we feel that that's not very helpful for students if they're feeling nervous but they can certainly say their name and if they say what they're going to talk about that helps um, the audience and the monitor to um, to know straight away what each, you know where they're headed if you like uh, before you start recording test your equipment to make sure that you are getting um, the sound and the visual quality that you need um, and then you're you're good to carry out the assessment complete the assessment record sheets as the students are assessed and save your recordings as described in the specifications okay what about those students who just really don't want to be video recorded well if you've got a large cohort you can try to avoid them but if you've got a small cohort then you won't be able to um, so then you need to think about what can I do to uh, make things as easy as possible for anybody who feels um, that they don't really want to be recorded uh, you do have the option to assess students remotely if that feels better to them for example you can record students through a teams meeting or zoom and on those you have there is the possibility for example to turn off self view if students feel strange about looking at themselves on the screen um, for those students who are really reluctant you can offer them to be um, recorded just with them and their teacher for example that can be um, less intimidating for some students and if you try everything and the student the, the video recording is really a hurdle then you can contact us with all the details and on a case-by-case -case basis we may be able to um, uh, allow an audio only recording and we would then um, instruct your monitor to accept uh, to expect like one audio only recording for example there's no kind of blanket exemption from video recording for any particular kind of student or 
particular setting like PRUES or alternative provision settings. Um, many, many students in all different kinds of um, contexts do do the SLE and are video recorded. So um, if you want to have an exemption from video recording or later on we'll talk about exemption from the SLE completely, um, then we do always have to have um, specific information on the students. We can't just say, OK, you're an alternative provision centre. You don't have to offer, you don't have to video record students. That's just not possible. It's not fair to um, the, um, the requirements of the specification as a whole, which we're required to um, maintain. Um, so the marking criteria, we'll have a look at the, um, the full list of criteria in a moment, but in general, then in order to pass, a student has to be audible. You have to be able to hear them and they, have used to, they need to use uh, spoken standard English, which needs to be intelligible and appropriate, generally appropriate for the formal setting of a presentation. Um, and then these are the more detailed uh, criteria which you will find in the specification. And um, you will see that um, the, the engagement of the audience is quite important. So it's not just about um, finding a topic which is very complicated. It's also about how it's delivered to the audience. Is it appropriately delivered? Is the audience engaged? So um, then we move on to finalising your sample and secure storage until upload to the LWT, the Learner Work Transfer Portal. So you've assessed all your students, you've done your um, assessment record sheets, you have got your recordings, um, you have checked through that your recordings are all audible and that the students are visible in them. And you have worked out your 10, 10, 10, 10 pass, 10 merit, 10 distinction. You then have to save those video recordings. So it's a two year course, the GCSE and the spoken language endorsement can be carried out at any time. But you can't submit your recordings until uh, the 15th of May in the summer series or the 5th of November in the November series. So you're going to have to store them. And it is very important that you store them in more than one place and that more than one person has got access. And the reason for that is we do sometimes find um, some schools choose to do them in year nine. So that's like a full two years before they're submitted. But by the time we get through to the end of year 11, the person who had access to the recordings is no longer there. Um, and then we have a crisis because the students will have to be video recorded again. So um, it is really important to make sure that you've got uh, more than one person uh, knowing where the re recordings are. Um, so a little bit more detail about the makeup of the sample. Um, as I said before, it's 10, 10 and 10. If you've got 30 or more candidates, 10 pass, 10 merit, 10 distinction. If you've got a cohort that doesn't fit that pattern, then you meet that requirement as near as closely as possible and then you backfill with the other grades. Now, I always do the maths really badly on this, but let's say um, you've got two passes and everything else is uh, merits and distinctions. Then you would be submitting those two passes. 30 minus 2 is 28. So you would then submit 14 merits and 14 distinctions. So you would follow that process um, uh, if you've not got um, a full range. If you've got 10 passes or 10 of each, you have to submit recordings of those students. You can't say, um, I've, got, uh, I've got 310 students, um, 10 of them got passes, but I didn't record any of those students, so I can't submit recordings for them. If you've got the 10 of each, you have to submit the recordings of each. Um, this is just a reminder of the file naming convention taken from the specification. So you've got the um, the candidate, the centre number, the candidate number, the surname, 
the initial and then the grade. OK, now we're moving on to frequently asked questions. I think there are 14 of them all together. Um, they're all they are all genuinely uh, FAQs. Can a student make more than one attempt at their presentation? Yes, they can do as many as they like um, and as many as you can facilitate at the school. Obviously, it's quite a time consuming activity. Um, so it would be unusual for students to have more than one, more than two attempts, for example. Two, can you use PowerPoints and or notes? You can, um, but uh, experience shows that using a PowerPoint is not necessary and that presentations with PPTs are not always uh, the best. Um, Handheld cue cards tends, tend to be um, more useful. How long should the presentation last? It's 10, 10 minutes in total for the whole assessment five to six minutes of the student presenting, two to three minutes of the students doing question and answers. There is no minimum time for the presentation, but as I said before, um, students should practice so that they know they're roughly at the right length. So if they only speak for three minutes um, and then do one or two minutes of question, so they're at half the recommended time, it's unlikely that they're going to be able to do anything other than passing. Four, does the teacher need to be part of the audience? Yes, they do. Can the audience be the teacher only? Yes, it can. Um, but as I said before, um, tends to go better in the Q&A if there are a few students at least in the audience too. Can I assess students remotely? Yes, you can. That's mainly for um, centres that are entering a lot of apprenticeship candidates, for example, who are all over the country in different work locations and the assessor can't get to all the different locations. But you can also use it for students with additional needs who find that way of being assessed better. Uh, do I need to record all my students? No, you don't. It's 30. If you've got more than 30 students, or everybody if you've got fewer than 30. But as I said, um, you do need to um, enter two samples if you've got one ENO and one EN2. And um, you do have to make up the distribution. If you've got 10 passes, you have to submit 10 passes. Um, who chooses a sample? You do. We don't choose this sample. So when you go into the Learner Work Transfer Portal, you have to use the Manage Learners tab and choose the students from your list who you've put into the sample. And then you'll have the list of names and then you'll drag and drop your recordings to um, each of the names. Um, what paperwork do I need to complete? You've got one assessment record sheet per student. You've got a head of centre declaration. The head of centre declaration is retained in your centre. And when you enter your grades on edX and online, it asks you to tick a box to say, yes, I've done the head of centre declaration. The assessment record sheets, you scan the 30 front sheets of the students who are in your sample as one PDF and up, upload that PDF to the admin materials section of the LWT. You don't have to uh, upload the um, assessment record sheets for the whole cohort, only for the students who are in the sample. Uh, it's useful for your monitor to have a printout of all the SLE grades that you've submitted uh, on edXL online, again, to the admin materials section. So when you uh, upload grades to edXL online at the end, it gives you the option to print them all off. So that's a useful record for you so that you know, oh, yes, uh, Jane got uh, um, a merit and I correctly entered a merit. Sometimes um, errors can, can take place during the uh, inputting um, uh, phase. Um, and it's also useful for your monitor to see the whole, all of the grades that you have submitted for the whole cohort. Um, and then you're uploading the recordings to the LWT. 
So that, that those are all the admin tasks that you need to do for the SLE. Uh, number 10, what will appear on students' uh, certificates? Um, so they have a main, one line is the main grade, GCSE English Language 7. And then underneath that, there is a line saying spoken language endorsement, pass, merit, distinction, or not classified, if that's the case. Um, OK. 11, how and when do I submit the grades and recordings? By the 15th of May for the summer series and the 5th of November for the November uh, exam series. The grades go on edXL online and the video sample goes on the learner work transfer portal. And as I said before, you can't uh, upload them at any time. It's usually about one month before um, the entry deadline, sorry, the submission deadline that those systems open and are ready to receive grades and recordings. So from about mid April in the summer and um, from about uh, from early October in the November uh, exam series. Um, can students carry forward their SLE result if they resit? Yes, they can, as I mentioned before, including from other awarding organisations. Um, and now we come from exemptions to exemptions. Sorry. So previously we, we talked about um, making audio instead of video recordings. But this FAQ is about being exempt from the SLE completely. So if you have uh, a med medical evidence of a condition that would prevent you from completing the SLE, then you can apply for an exemption using the JCQ form that I'm linking you to and um, providing the evidence and sending emailing that all to uk.special.requirements at pearson.com. Um, so typically a student with selective mutism, for example, might be granted an exemption and deaf or hearing impaired candidates are granted exemptions because it's not permitted to use BSL um, for the SLE. Um, so if you have applied for an exemption, when you enter the grades on edXL online, then you will enter NC not classified for anyone who has applied for an exemption and then our systems will match that up with a granted exemption and they will have a, a crossed sword symbol against their spoken language endorsement line on their certificate which indicates an exemption. Uh, right I think we're that's the penultimate. And the last question, which has come up quite a bit in the last academic year is, can I dual use a pr presentation uh, for GCSE and functional skills level one, two? Unfortunately, you can't because the timings and requirements of the two um, qualifications are completely different. So um, the GCSE ones I've talked to you about now, it's one student talking to an audience, um, five to six minutes of talking and then Q&A, whereas in functional skills, level one and level two, the, the, the discussion, so the task two requires a minimum of three to three candidates, three learners, uh, up to a maximum of five who discuss a topic together. Um, and the uh, criteria against which they are marked are different to the criteria against which GCSE students are marked. So sadly, no, you can't dual use those if students are entered for both. In the live session, we'll have questions now. And uh, these are my contact details if you want to get in touch. Um, so it only remains for me to say thanks for all your hard work in advance on the spoken language endorsement. There are some really nice comments from the principal monitor on how much the team enjoyed listening to your students' presentations and how impressive many of them were. So I hope it goes well and I hope the start of term also goes well. Thanks very much. <laughs>